everyone, this is Aid from Witchbike.com. Now here's an interesting one. Today, as you can see, if you're in the know, I'm going to be riding the uh, Honda NC750 X for Extraordinary. Now this one is an automatic bike. It's not bad looking either. Got nice front. Now this is very similar in looks and general riding to the Costora that I rode uh, a while back. It's uh, similar looking, just smaller. Obviously a 750cc engine, ABS. Very smart looking actually. We'll take you for a ride and let's see what we think about it. I think it's pretty smart. Now what it's got over the Costora is that it's smaller and it's lighter and it's going to be more usable power. The Costora had actually quite a lot of power and in the top mode, the sport mode, it was actually pretty rapid. Whereas this bike, now this is a perfect bike for beginners or older riders perhaps that want to get into biking but are a bit worried about everything that comes with it, especially the changing gear part and the clutch on the left. You know, it might be all a bit much for people, especially if you've had a background in scooters or when you're young or you're getting back into biking, and just something a bit more relaxing, then this might be the bike for you. Looks pretty good, comfortably take a pillion. You can add the usual panniers on it for a bit of touring action. Must be quite impressive, I'm quite impressed with the looks, especially in this livery. It's quite svelte. Right, now, Let's turn it on. When you turn it on, it automatically selects neutral. You don't have to worry about that. There's a very little wishy-washy woogie with the uh, LCD display. Not too much to talk about. Standard uh, things. Time, range, speedo, fuel tank, and rev counter at the top of a little like, line that will shoot up and down, which um, you may not be able to see too clearly, but I don't think this bike's all about the revs. In fact, the red line's about seven and a half, seven, six and a half, seven thousand. That's very low, but of course it's an automatic. Let's start it up. Okay, it's got quite a nice, nice, quite a nice little growl to it. Not too bad. So the main differences are, it has no brake lever. Obviously on the left-hand side, it has no lever at all on the left-hand side. So no clutch or no left hand brake as you'd find a normal twist and go scooter. On the right hand side you've got the rear brake and as usual you've got the front brake on the right. So it's like the left hand side has been <laughs> completely stripped away basically. So all you've got to think about is the right hand side. The right hand side makes you go and the right hand side makes you stop. So all you've got to worry about, which is a great aspect of safety on a bike like this, is just worrying about indicators and seeing where you're going. This makes this an inherently safer bike, which is why I mention it's good for beginners and new riders. Let's take it out and see what we think. Okay, stand up as it won't engage. Now on the right hand side, you've got uh, steady neutral. You press left slightly, you're going to drive. You can also go into sport. So I stick it in drive. You hear a clunk as it engages first gear. Now if you try to pull away now, it'll obviously start moving. And that's one thing to consider. When you're at traffic lights and you've stopped, don't give it the old beans like you do on a normal bike, otherwise you'll go forward and straight into the back of the other car, which uh, isn't a great idea. Let's quickly just go over the modes. Now, it's got drive, and that's a fully automatic mode. As in the car, you basically just worry about accelerating. It changes the gears for you up and down, and you just brake normally, in this case with the right hand or the right foot. Now the next one you've got is semi-automatic mode. Now you leave it in drive, but you can influence the gears in the on the left here with your fingers, left and right, down, up, down, up, 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 down, 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 very simply. So it works like a pedal, a pedal gears, a pedal gears on um, a steering wheel on a car, on a sports car. So they're on your left hand. So it's like a quick shifter with your fingers in a way, because there's no clutch to worry about. But you see, you can manually intervene on the car, I'm sorry, on the engine of the bike, and therefore, if you're looking at an opportunity to overtake, 
on this bike, which hasn't got a huge amount of torque or power, you'd probably want to just drop down a gear, so just hitting the bottom one of your thumb. Okay, now the last one of all is if you click it again, it goes into sport. You see it goes from that's neutral. Click it again on the left, goes into drive, click it again, goes into sport. It's putting drive for the moment. But in sport, it's fully manual and you're actually going along, it won't change gear for you, and you use left and right. So that's pretty cool, it's just like a bike, easy to ride, but with a kind of quick shifter, which is just utilising your fingers instead of your foot. That's pretty cool. So we've actually got three ways to ride it. So let's try it first with a normal drive. Right, put the screen down. Okay, have a little look. Indicator on. Nice indicator actually. It's um, right in front of your face so you can't miss it, so you can turn it off. As those of you who watch my videos know, I'm pretty poor. My weak spot is turning the indicator off, which could be pretty dangerous to be honest. Okay. Well, it's very smooth, very progressive. It's not going to uh, it's not going to jump out at you. Again, suitable for newer or beginner riders. Uh, let's go straight over, shall we? Like I did in the cross tourer. So there you go, second, third, fourth, fourth gear, fifth gear. So it's automatically changing the gears for you upwards, and it will automatically change them down for you as well. Fourth, third. So I'm going down 17, 16 mile an hour, second, and it picks up again. Bit of speed up there, it stayed in second for that. It recognised it needed more grunt to go up the incline and stayed it, kept it in second. That's pretty clever, that pretty clever. Um, first reactions uh, your knees are quite high, um, that's uh, usually a good thing for comfort and longevity on a bike. The seat is unusually, on my phone, it's quite hard, it's, it's harder than the cross tourer by miles, it's harder than it, my CBR even. Oh, the filter down here. Part of the joys of riding, make sure, if it turns green now, then I'm fucking flummoxed. Yep, there you go, all fine. All good. Um, yeah, the seat's a bit hard. Um, the seat's not as tall as a cross tour, but it's still fairly tall, but you can lower it slightly. But again, this sort of adventure style, is not for the very shortest of people. The handlebars are high and wide, so your forearms are quite level with the ground, which means there's no stress on your wrists, which means there's no stress on your shoulders and less stress on your necks. You're in a sitting up position. It's all in all, extremely comfortable riding position. It's just that seat which is probably spoiling my absolute experience with the bike. Oh, there you go. Try and do the revs and uh, start, start moving forward. You don't want to do that. Uh, it's got a very, um, almost a token windscreen at the front of it, as you can see. But that's enough to uh, deflect most wind over you, considering that you're not going to be going crazy on this bike. I'm not sure the top end, obviously it'll go over 100. Pull is 100, 215, as a guess, I'm not sure. But this bike's all about um, mid-range touring in comfort, and a fair amount of style. Obviously the manual version of this has, has all the same dynamics. It's just that you have to change all the gears yourself. So I'd wonder, is it really worth it? Because on this one you can change gears yourself anyway, or just put it into lazy mode, the drive, and go from there. I think that's a great idea, personally. It gives you the options. Now if I just my right finger, Turn, put it into neutral, I can rev it, put it back into drive. Actually, I was told that um, to avoid that happening, moving forward, down here, you've got a handbrake. Look at that. You put it like a handbrake, you pull it up and round, and now, even when I'm in first gear, you see the back end slightly going down, it won't go forward. So it's just so you've got a moment, a parking light comes, which is like a car. That's pretty cool, that. <laughs> to turn it off, you, uh, this is what I found out on the cross tour, I didn't know how to do it otherwise, it's been about 10 minutes. <laughs> you press that button in. Oh, jeez, quick, someone's it. Yeah, bomb oh, hell. I wonder how I trouble last time, that's pretty stiff. But, because bridge you can't expect it to be. Now, the great thing about this bike is, you can put a full size helmet under this, what would usually be a petrol tank. How good's that? Full size helmet, even a modular helmet like mine, which is particularly big. That makes this bike incredibly practical. 
stick some panniers on the back and a bat box then the uh, things are looking up right let's go well, there's a bit of rough road to see what it's like oh that was good yep yeah, that's good so far it's going over an unmade road here and bumps very nicely indeed obviously it's got not scrambler style but it's a slightly heavier tread on the tyres and more forgiving suspension it's not meant to be thrashed around the bend on the track or over at the TT so it's sort of 40 mile an hour 50 60 it's picking up quite nicely now so it's got a good ton of speed but nothing that's going to scare you you do feel complete control of this you let off the throttle and it coasts down quite comfortably it hasn't got a massive amount of engine baking um, probably due to it being an automatic so if you're coming straight from a sports bike to this it might just catch you out a little bit but uh, that's what brakes are for pop off down here I'm trying not to get lost right, remember to turn right past the blue pit stop garage I notice I keep getting bloody lost as you're probably well aware of my vlogs so that's one let's put it into sport you can do it on the fly now in sport I'm in fourth gear And it's still in fourth gear, and it's still in fourth gear because it won't change, it's waiting for you to do a change on the left hand side. I suddenly put it in sport, this bike suddenly becomes quite a bit faster. It's not bad brakes, not good brakes, not bad. Oh, let's go right here, of course that's a bit jerky. Forgetting how keenly it picks up, a bit like my scooter. So it's in sport, in second. Uh, oh, bloody hell, where are they? Oh, there they are, change up. Change up, change down. Yeah, just for a minute there, I've got where they are, but now I've got my left hand in the right position. So my index finger's on the up button, and my uh, thumb's on the down button. I don't even see with the camera in this position. So down to fourth, down into third, down into second. Oh, I won't go down into second, that's interesting. So at a certain speed, it protects the engine. Oh, that is clever, isn't it? So you really can't fuck it up if you leave if you wanted to. So I'm into fourth. Into the fifth, into the sixth. That's pretty good. Let's go back down to the limit. Yeah, all right, handling. Well, not too shabby. I mean, no, it's not sports bike like. It's quite a heavy bike. It's not silly heavy, but it's fairly heavy. Um, it's a bit slow in the turns. That's what you're expecting. This is what you're buy, buying this bike for. You buy it for safe, casual, easy riding. I mean, just without any effort at all, just putting around this sort of speed, it's so easy. You actually got, you got nothing to think about apart from the accelerator at this moment in time. You can have a look around you, you can absorb it. Yeah, you know, it's a completely different proposition. A bit like when I'm out on my scooter. It's a different kind of experience. I wouldn't say this is fun like my scooter because you're going at a faster speed and there's a bit more to think about on that basis that you can't completely relax and just have fun with it still got to be a bit on your guard flipping on, I'm getting lost already aren't I? marvellous oh that's interesting, what happens now? it's probably going to stall isn't it? now it changed gear down for me automatically that's good it's definitely in first gear it doesn't go into neutral automatically oh that's interesting so even in sport mode it goes down the gears for you that's actually pretty handy so you just to concentrate about braking it changes the gears for you that's fantastic actually that makes a big difference if you think about it my god even less to think about <laughs> oh Ferrari look at that nice nice it's like a large Panigale isn't it right um, is my bum getting better it is a bit it's got a bit of vibration coming through on my feet, a little bit through on my arse um, but the firmness is kind of going as my arse is getting used to it but overall I think if you're looking at longer journeys you might want to look at changing that seat to be honest it's the only thing that really sticks out right so what do I like about this bike? right the price, it's cheap the looks are good it's an automatic, and for those who want that sort of thing, who want easy riding, which is much safer than usual because you've got less to think about, then obviously this is brilliant. It's going to be a 10 out of 10 for that, because you cannot get any safer than that on a larger bike. 
you just literally got to worry about the throttle and then the brake occasionally when you think about stopping so that's fantastic I think the style of it is really good, it's a nice looking bike it's got, it's, when you're sitting up like this, it's very comfortable you know, it's never going to never going to change I mean, that, well, you might want to tie tuck down, that's up to you but you can happily just go along like this certainly up to about 6 or 70, it doesn't seem blustery at all that's pretty good so I like the position I like the overall comfort accepting the seat the speedo is right in your face and really high up so you actually only have to glance down with your eyes and not even that far and you can see everything at a glance that's brilliant I've been on many bikes and you just can't see shit all you have to take your eyes off the road which is the very point in that okay you look down you can't really see the rev counter but I was expecting that to quite frankly on an automatic bike what the fuck has rev got to do with anything anyway <laughs> does it really matter and also good about this bike, it's uh, pretty frugal, it's not max 750 therefore by definition it's not going to be ragging it in high res so therefore it's been more frugal than a ride on a similar bike right, what don't I like about it? right, that seat first off, I'm finding it hard and I've been on lots of different seats and it's noticeably hard when you get on it um, you can wear better, well, different gear, more padding which make a difference other than that, there might be an additional seat that you can get, you might be able to spec it at the time of purchase you might get it thrown in as you buy the bike from new or there'll be aftermarket alternatives either from the manufacturer or probably from Fleabay and similar outfits so we might get it cheaper I mean in principle the NC NS 750 sort of models are massive centers around the world so let's have changed the seat structure there's probably huge options out there um, one thing which is a very really pleasant spot let's go back to the good sorry that the wing mirrors are brilliant they're high and they're wide because of the, the bikes wide no the handlebars are wide so you can see brilliantly I can see the left and right hand side of that Audi behind me in both mirrors so you can see the whole car in both mirrors that's phenomenal really and again an added safety feature another reason why you might want to buy this bike over in quotation marks, normal bikes. Oh, one of a boat bump then. That deals a bit of a jolt in the arse. That's that seat, I reckon. The suspension's fine. Uh, what don't I like about it? Well, personally, for me, of course, um, there's bugger all speed, even in uh, the sport mode. And you keep the revs down. It really isn't that fast. But now that's for me because, you know, I'm, looking, I'm actually looking at this bike on behalf of my father, would you believe? He's new to biking as well. He's seen me out and about, seen the smile on my face. I thought I'll have some of that. Now he's looking at get um, a powerful scooter like the Integra. In fact, I was in the showroom with him, and then the salesman said, "Well, why don't you look at this bike as well? The current bike I'm on here, NC750." And uh, said, "Have a look at this one as well. It's got exactly the same engine as the Integra. It's got the same DCT automatic gear transmission with the options. I'll be able to change it how you wish, different modes. Um, but it looks like a motorcycle." and uh, I think my dad was sold a bit, especially when he showed me the extra storage because weirdly enough, would you believe it Integra didn't have the amount of, same amount of storage as this has I mean that's got to be a complete faux pas by Honda but surely you'd expect the scooter looking 750 version of this to have well, to, you know, have a, a large amount of storage to go with the market segment it's aimed at so a bit weird that so my dad uh, was keen for me to go out on this bike tell him what I thought so he can watch this video with keen interest so that's the job done that'll be my present for Father's Day yeah all in all I highly recommend it I might as well sign off here actually so this has been Aid from uh, whichbike.com uh, please visit the site remember we're still looking for some staff people to help out my community forum uh, people to add um, comparison videos from YouTube which is really easy uh, people to write articles and the people who are looking to get into uh, motor vlogging or who are already in it and would like to join forces um, get more power to their own logs via our site, that's fine uh, give us a shout on YouTube or give us a shout on the main witchbike.com site and we'll be happy to hear from you until that point you take care, safe riding out there see you later